In this example, we're told we pour 200 grams of hot tea at 95 degrees Celsius. So this is the hot tea at 95 degrees Celsius into a 25 degrees Celsius 150 gram glass cup. So that's a cold object. Now immediately you might think to yourself, how do we fit 200 grams of tea into a 150 gram cup? The 150 grams here is the mass of the cup. It's not the capacity of the cup. If you think about, for example, a large paper cup, it might only weigh a few grams, but you could put a lot more than a few grams of water inside the cup. So the mass of the cup and the capacity of the cup are two different things. And this 150 grams here refers to the mass of the cup. So let's draw a little picture. Here's our, our cup. We'll draw a little teacup. Maybe sitting on a saucer there. And here's some hot tea. I guess we'll just draw this as some brown tea being poured in here into the cup. Okay, the mass of the tea is 200 grams and the temperature of the tea is 95 degrees Celsius and then the cup down here the mass of the cup is 150 grams and the temperature of the cup is 25 degrees Celsius that's our given information now we're gonna suppose that no heat is lost to the surroundings that's not really true we know that when you pour uh, hot water into a cup or something. You can see the steam coming off. Okay, but just for the purposes of this problem, we're going to ignore this. And in an actual chemistry experiment, you can insulate this fairly well, or at least insulate it with known equipment such that you can accurately measure or calculate the amount of heat that leaked off. But just to demonstrate the concept here, we're going to assume that we have a well insulated environment and that hot the hot tea will heat up the cold cup and so that the energy, the heat energy that leaves the tea will cause the cup to get warm and the tea will cool off a little bit. We're going to assume, assume that all the heat lost by the, um, the tea goes into the cup because we're told to assume here that no heat is lost to the surroundings. So in other words, conservation of energy applies here to our system. Our system is these two objects, the tea and the cup. And we can say that the heat lost by the tea is equal to the heat gained by the cup. And mathematically, we would set that up like this. The heat lost by the T, let's look at the left side first. That would be the mass of the T times the C of the T times the delta T of the T. That's the change in temperature of the T and that will equal the heat gained by the cup which is also mc delta t that's the mass of the cup times the c the specific heat of the cup times the delta t of the cup so the heat lost by the t mc delta t is equal to the heat gained by the cup mc delta t for the cup now we can put in some numbers here this is um, in my opinion always made a little bit easier if you draw a little thermometer and you just mark your cold temperature and your hot temperature and our cold temperature down here is 25 degrees Celsius and our hot temperature is 95 degrees Celsius and you should be able to tell that the final temperature that's what we're trying to find here what is the final temperature when equilibrium is reached it's going to end up somewhere in between the cup will warm up but it can't possibly warm up to higher than 95 degrees and the tea is going to cool off as a, as a result of being in contact with the cooler cup. But it can't possibly cool down to below 25. So my final temperature is going to be somewhere in between. So I'm going to put a little mark there and write TF. That's my final temperature. And I don't know exactly where that is. That's what I'm trying to find. But I know that the tea will cool off this much and the cup will warm up this much. And those are what I'll put in for my delta T, my change in temperature of the T is that much right there and my change in temperature for the cup is that much right there. So I'll use those to put the numbers in. So the mass of the T on the left side, this is going to be the mass 
of the T times the C, the specific heat of the T, the change in temperature for the T is going to be 95 minus TF. You can see that much change in temperature is 95 minus TF. And that's going to equal, I'm going to come down here where I have a little more room, that's going to equal the mass of the cup times the specific heat of the cup times the change in temperature for the cup. And the change in temperature for the cup is the difference between TF and 25. So that's going to be TF minus 25. Now notice that in one case I have a number minus TF right there. And in the other case I have TF minus a number right there. That's because I'm always doing the high minus the low. And you can see that 95 is above TF. So the amount of heat lost is going to depend, to depend on that temperature drop, 95 minus TF. And for the cup down here, the amount of heat gained depends on this temperature difference, the difference between TF and 25. That's TF minus 25. You, the way I'm doing this, I set this up so that this is always a positive number and that's always a positive number. And to do that, you need the high number minus the low number. For the change in T of the T, the high number is 95 and the low number is TF. So this comes out to be a positive number. For the change in T of the cup, the high number is TF and the low number is 25. So TF minus 25 comes out to be a positive number. And that's a valid way to think about the problem. The heat lost by the T, that's a certain amount of heat. How much it lost, we would think of that as a positive number, the amount that it lost. And that equals the heat gained by the cup. That's a positive number, how much heat gained. So this much heat lost by the T is this much heat gained by the cup. And if both of those are positive numbers, it makes sense. You can, um, you can set these up a different way. And, and some textbooks and teachers do it a different way. They might set it up such that heat going into something is always positive and heat going out of something is always negative. And, and it always balances out to zero. And that's a completely valid way to set up a problem like this as well. I'm just choosing to set it up like this, I think. If you think in terms of conservation of energy, the heat lost by one, that amount of heat, equals the heat gained by the other.